everybody, and welcome back to Weeaboo Wednesday. I've only got 15 seconds to get your attention, so... <laughs> You guys gotta go check out my recent haul. If you click the card, you'll go check it out, and I've got Mega Man stuff, Pokemon stuff, Polynian, and a Galgai Gar model of a cute girl. With all that out of the way, let's get to some news. Let's start it off right, baby, with some Gundam news. Gundam Battle Gunpla Warfare is a new smartphone game that's going to be coming out in late August. Of course, the name implies that there will be lots of Gundam fighting in the game. There's going to be exclusive characters to the game itself, as well as your own creatable and customizable Gundams, as well as lots of Gundams from the catalog of many Gundams that span several series. It's going to be the first North American Gundam game, so make sure to check it out because if you pre-order now, well, it's not really a pre-order, you're just basically pre-registering to say you want to download the app. If you pre-order, there's going to be a free RX-78, for 100,000 pre-orders, and then at 200,000 pre-orders, there's going to be an exclusive, in-game, free Wing Zero Gundam. It looks pretty cool. There's apparently an actual story to it, as well as, I'm assuming, just multiplayer skirmishes and whatnot like that. I already pre-ordered, because, man, I want that Wing Zero, so go check it out if you're into Gundam. Junichi Masuda from Game Freak recently responded to all the outcry from the Pokemon community fan base that is angry about the new shortages of Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yes, that's right. If you didn't realize, in the new game, they are not putting all 800 Pokemon in it. To be honest, though, I don't really think that's so much of a problem. I can't tell you the last time I tried to catch more than 100 Pokemon. I could see them trying to write off the problem of not having as many Pokemon to maybe say, well, this is a completely different region in a different place of the world, and in this area, not all 800 Pokemon inhabit this same place. I get that, because honestly, when you think about it, not all the animals in the world all come from the same continent. So, I would be okay with that. But they sort of wrote it off in a weird way, saying, well, just because the Pokemon aren't in this game, doesn't mean they won't be in future games. I think a bigger problem isn't so much that there's not 800 Pokemon in the game, and more so that the game is looking not to be quite on par with old N64 games. But either way, it's going to sell crazy, so who are you to judge? You're probably going to buy it, even if you're criticizing it. Speaking of Pokemon, if you're into that kind of thing, you can get a Snorlax couch, complete with a Pokeball Ottoman from Rakuten. The chair itself is close to 23,000 yen, which is about 214 American US dollars, and that's a pretty steep price for what looks like a pretty poor quality chair. The Pokeball Ottoman is actually extra, so don't expect to get that for free. It is apparently adult-sized. If you look at some of the pictures, they show somebody laying in it, but it still looks kind of weird. I love Snorlax, but, you know, I mean... You want to hear my best Snorlax impression? Snorlax. Pretty good, huh? This has been in the shot the whole... There's been a lot of buzz recently about how Netflix put Evangelion on their streaming service. Besides there being a terrible new dub for it, they also took out some of the music that they couldn't get licensing for. Of course, that is the iconic end theme of Fly Me to the Moon. Now, because some people were so obsessed with that fact, there's been a custom Chrome extension added so that when you're watching it, it'll automatically play Fly Me to the Moon at the end when the credit sequence is playing. You can actually skip it if you like, but yeah, it's there, so if you were that attached to it. I think it's just really pathetic that anime fans are this temperamental about something like that, when in all reality, they hate dubs to begin with, and now they're gonna complain about this terrible dub and still watch it anyway, and then come up with ways to make watching it better? Just watch it on DVD or something. Still watching it on Netflix is supporting Netflix doing this and destroying anime in this way. This is why I don't support Netflix. They're a terrible company. My real question though is if it has the different versions because as you may know, if you've watched Neon Genesis Evangelion, Ray's voice actress sings it, Asuka's voice actress sings it. It's sang by quite a few people, so are they just gonna have the original or what? That's not immersive enough for me. I need to make a Chrome extension that changes the song every single time I play it. Seriously. Have you ever played Shantae? If not, then what the heck are you waiting for? They're awesome games about this really cute genie character who goes around belly dancing her way around and turning into different animals. It's a really cool platformer. And with the recent success of Half Genie Hero and Shantae Risky's Revenge, they're actually going to be making a Shantae 5, which is super awesome. 
It was announced earlier this year that Shantae 5 was going to be a thing, and supposedly it'll be releasing by the end of the year. Now, with all that in mind, it would seem that Studio Trigger has been chosen to animate the opening for Shantae 5. This is awesome because the characters are designed so well for Trigger to do something truly amazing with a really crazy, highly budgeted, and crazily animated opening for them. I'm really excited to see this. Fathom Events and G-Kids will be bringing Promare to the United States in September. We knew that this was happening, but now we can see this trailer, which actually puts some subtitles to the audio on screen. And I gotta say, this movie looks better than ever. Better than any of the Japanese trailers I've seen now, Promare truly looks like an awesome movie. I cannot wait to see this. It's going to be premiered on September 17th, and then on the 19th and the 20th of September, it'll be playing in select theaters around the United States. Now, of course, one of the days, I think the 19th, they're actually gonna be premiering the dub, whereas the 20th, they'll be playing the subbed version of it. I cannot wait to see this. It looks so awesome, and it just looks 10 times better than I thought from the limited trailers that we got from Japan originally. So, and my birthday's in September, so I better get to go see this. Hatsune Miku, Project Diva Mega 39, what apparently it is actually pronounced as Megamix, is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2020. If you've played any of the Project Diva games before, you'll know that there are these really fun rhythm games that all feature Hatsune Miku and other Vocaloid songs. I've pretty much played all of these. I have a bunch of them on PS Vita and they're a lot of fun. But apparently this new version coming to the Switch is going to have 101 songs, as well as over 300 costumes for Hatsune Miku and the rest of the cast. This is insane. I cannot wait to see this because now I'll be able to play it on the handheld like I did when I played it on Vita and I can also mount it into the dock and play it in docked mode as well. This is so awesome and I cannot wait for this. Now this is all being done in honor of the 10th anniversary of the Project Diva series and it's so crazy to think now that these games have been coming out for the past 10 years. Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. And in our final story today, a special preview video has been premiered online showing the details for Attack on Titan and its final season. Yes, it would seem that the fourth season will indeed be the final season of the Attack on Titan anime. Now, this is crazy to think because I know that recently they got rid of Wit Studio, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there, but I'm interested to see what happens. Now, it would seem that the date for this is set for fall of 2020, so you have plenty of time to catch up. I need to catch up myself. I started watching season two, but I just wasn't as into it. I will catch up though, because I will watch this show to completion. What's going to happen? The final battle for humanity is on the line. Will they get to the basement and find out whether or not Eren's dad is in there making Titans or something? I don't know anything about the story, but that's my assumption that's going to happen. They're going to find Eren's dad down there like, tink, tink, tink. Oh, hey, Eren, I was just over here making the Titan machine. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I can't wait to see what happens, and I am really excited to see what they're gonna do about a studio. Maybe they're gonna just do like a crazy amalgam and get all these studios together to make this crazy last season. But that's just a theory, an anime theory. And with that said, that's everything. That is all of Weeaboo Wednesday this week. If you wanna watch my recent anime goods haul, make sure to check out this video here. There's a lot of cool stuff and it was super expensive. And also I've been doing streams lately. If you wanna come watch me play Mario Maker, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel so you get notified about that. If you like this video, like it. And if you wanna talk about any of the stories, do so in the comments below. I love you guys so much and I'm gonna see you on Weeaboo Wednesday next week and Figure Friday this week, yeah!